everyone. We are Elisa and Jason from EECC Travels and we have recently taken a Disney cruise. So you guys all know that we have a predominantly cruise with Carnival. So now we are going to do a comparison video of Carnival versus Disney Cruise Line. Yes, indeed. So first of all, did you like your Disney cruise? Of course. Before yes. we get into the details? Absolutely. It was uh, it was totally different cruise experience than we've ever experienced before. Mm -hmm. um, the layout of the ship is, you know, everything from the layout of the ship to the food layouts, the dining layouts. It was just totally different experience, but a positive one overall. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to break this down into categories, okay? Mm -hmm. So first we're going to talk about cost and value, and they are not the same thing. Okay, so cost. Let's talk cost first. We obviously have to give this to Carnival. Everybody knows that Disney Cruise Line is a higher priced cruise. So we're just going to get that out of the way right off and say cost, we have to give to Carnival. But let's talk about value. Okay, value is what you're getting for your money. So even though Disney costs more, are you getting a value out of that? Jason, what do you think? I think so. You have to think about everything that is included in the cost of your cruise, all right? So, we know that whenever you cruise with any cruise line, your accommodations are included, your dining is included, the shows are included, things like that, okay? So, you've got to look at the extra that is included in a cruise to determine if you feel that Disney has a good value. We all know Carnival has a good value. You know what you're getting out of that. But Disney, you're paying more, so you want to know, am I getting value out of this cruise? Well, number one, if you're a Disney fan, then there's added value right there because you've got characters um, that you can meet and greet with. There are special, the sail away parties and other events that are hosted with characters. So you have that. Like the pirate party. Yeah, the pirate party. The pirate party was really cool. The sail away party was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, we were there on a Christmas cruise, so they did a whole nother Christmas event poolside. That was really cool. First time uh, at Christmas on, at sea, and that mm -hmm. was uh, that was really neat. Festive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Put you in the Christmas spirit. Yeah. So on top of the all of the shows that are going to be included on all cruise lines, you've got these extra events. You've got these extra <clears throat> meet and greets and things like that. And I will say this too, um, going back to the value thing, um, that one thing I really, really like about Disney is that, you know, they have their private island called Castaway Key. And when you when they dock at Castaway Key, which we didn't get a chance to do that, we'll get into that later. That Okay, uh, that, that's later. Uh, that's mm -hmm. coming, so stay tuned. Mm -hmm. But um, <clears throat> when you when you get to their private island, Castaway Key, and you get off the ship, everything on Castaway Key is included. Uh, you don't come out of pocket, okay? As opposed to NCL or Carnival's private islands, it's on you. You have to pay for it. So yeah. that is more added value. Yeah, I think that's very cool that the island is an extension of their ship. Yeah, of course, there's things you can pay extra right. for there. Right, of course, there, your souvenirs and things like that, but food, right, um, but beverages. All your food's included. They have um, ice cream machines on Castaway Key. You save all a lot. drinks are included. So if you do a, one of their cruises that includes a stop at Castaway Key, which a lot of their cruises do, then you've got one day where you don't have to pay for excursions, you don't have to pay for beach access, you don't have to pay for your food because it's all included. So that's a good point. That really does go to the value of a Disney cruise. No doubt. Okay. So overall, in my, if we're going to compare, we're going to say who has a better value, Carnival or Disney? I'm going to say they're pretty equal because you're, you're paying more, but you're getting more out of it too. Mm -hmm. So I think they both have a good value for what you're paying. Yeah. You agree with that? Uh, yeah, I believe so. Okay. Okay, next topic is entertainment. So we're going to break this into two categories, okay? We've got entertainment that's in the state, you know, in the theater, the stage shows, and then entertainment around the ship. So Jason, what do you think about Okay, I, I can I can make this short, sweet, and to the point, and factual, <laughs> okay? Um, I think that the theater entertainment 
is superior on a Disney cruise ship. You know, Disney does the, that very, very, very well. That's they're, what okay, they're known for. Yeah. yeah, that's what they're known for. I mean, they are the pioneers of that. I mean, kind of, sort of, you know? They put shows on Broadway. So, yeah, yeah, so, it's that I mean, quality. if anybody knows how to put together a show, it's, it's the Disney company. Um, so, theater shows, it's first class, Broadway stuff. I mean, it is just phenomenal. Um, <clears throat> around the ship entertainment, I would say like um, Carnival wins out on over NCL and Disney. Absolutely. Right? I mean, I mean you can combine those two, <laughs> and Carnival still wins out. Yeah. What I mean is when you're walking down Promenade and you turn the corner, you may have a a band playing, you know, in the corner, like at the Ocean View area on the Promenade mm -hmm. of, of the Carnival or something like that. There's bands or live entertainment at the pool. Um, all over the ship of Carnival. So Carnival definitely wins out on the entertainment all over the ship. But Disney wins out in the theater. They have the best shows that we've seen. Yeah, I 100% agree with him. And I mean, one thing that really just stood out to us that it was a missing piece of the puzzle is Disney has this awesome pub and there was never live music. Like, how can you have this awesome pub and not have live music in there? So, it was just a kind of disconnect on that. Yeah, um, the crown and fin? Yeah. Yeah, really cool. a lot of time in there and never live music. And you guys will see it. Really cool little swanky uh, vibe, Irish pub. And uh, it was it was really cool. But there was they missed a really cool opportunity to, or they're missing the boat with not putting live entertainment in there. At least some acoustic artist. Yeah. Or be a great place to also do karaoke. Yep. Now, I think they had a piano player in the Cadillac Lounge. That was not our vibe. We went in there one time, and it just, eh, we weren't feeling that. Yeah. But the Crown and Finn, yeah, like he said, and because uh, the, the Red Frog Pub, almost every night, you can get a live acoustic musician in there. Cadillac oh. Lounge was super, super cool themed. It was like, swanky. It was really themed, like, you know, Disney does things very well when, they, when it comes to theming. But it was just, you know, the theming was cool, but... The vibe never, just, we never could settle in with it. You yeah, know? I agree on that. Okay, next topic is food. And again, we have to break this down into categories. We're going to talk buffet food, main dining room food, and poolside food. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Let's start with poolside food. Oh, my goodness. Well, poolside food on Disney I wasn't that impressed with. You had Daisy's Delights, which was sandwiches and things like that. And then you had Pete's Bur Boiler Bites, which you could get your hamburgers yeah, and Pete's stuff Boiler like that. Pete's Boiler Bites is what it's called. And, and they had pizza. But a lot of times we would go get pizza and it was closed. Yeah, the little sandwich thing, which is kind of towards the back of the ship. It was, it was okay. okay. You could get salads and there were pre-made sandwiches. Yeah. You know, you know, it's a pre-made sandwich. Sandwiches always taste better when they make them fresh. Uh, let's face it. They just do. And, you know, if you're on a keto diet, I can't have hamburgers and chicken tenders and fried this and fried that and french fries. So, you know, I was kind of just screwed. Um, and it just wasn't an abundance. It wasn't enough, in my opinion. But on the flip side of that, Carnival has really good poolside food. They've yeah. got the guy's burgers, the blue iguana uh, tacos. And it's and it's accessible. Yeah. It's, it's quick and easy to grab, you know. Um, definitely Carnival wins out. Yeah. Poolside food for sure. Yep. Buffet food is another story. Though. Buffet food is a whole nother story. Um, was, the food was great. Oh my God, Good, yes. good, good, good food, you guys. And then not only did they have the buffet with really good food, but on the right side, they had like this little area, um, where you could get seafood, like a Dungeness crab claws, clams, um, sure all, the eat, all the boiled shrimp you could get. And it's all laying right there on a big bed of ice, displayed out really nice. And uh, tartar sauce and cocktail sauce and lemons. So that was cool because I'm on a uh, keto diet. So I can, and I love boiled shrimp. So yeah. that, you know, the food was excellent. The desserts were excellent. Uh, lots to choose from. They changed it up every day. Yeah, the the buffet changed every day, but that seafood area was yeah. always there, and he ate it almost every single yeah, day. Yeah, so good. And the breakfast buffet was excellent. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they didn't always do steak and eggs, but when they did, I got steak and eggs. But yeah. there was always plenty to choose from. It was yeah. always very, very, very good. Yeah. So definitely, Disney wins out 
when it comes to buffet food, no doubt, hands down. Oh, totally agree with that. Yeah. Okay, main dining room. All right, let's talk about the setups of main dining room on each cruise line first. On Carnival, you either choose early dining, late dining, or anytime dining. Mm. Then you're assigned to a one specific dining room, and if you have early or late, you're assigned to one specific table, okay? The menu changes every day. On Disney, you have what's called rotational dining. So there are three dining rooms. So on a seven night cruise, you visit each of the dining rooms twice and a third restaurant you see three times, okay? So we had rotational dining there on, we were on the Disney Wonder, so we had Triton's, Animator's Palette, and Tiana's Place. And I really liked, it's basically like taking you to a different themed specialty restaurant each night, okay? So instead of just a this is your dining room. Triton's was themed to Little Mermaid, and Tiana's place was themed to Princess, Princess and, and the Frog. Frog. It had a live jazz band. Tiana would come out. Uh, Louis would come out with his uh, trumpet. It was very, very themed. It was a performance as part of the show. Animator's Palette, I'll let you tell them about it. That's the coolest thing ever. Yeah, that was nice. Um, you know, it was, first of all, the atmosphere was probably the best out of the three. Mm -hmm. um, the, all the walls would change. Like, you could, you would see ca cartoons like Donald Duck and Mickey Mouse and all them moving around into the, in the picture frames there that were scattered out throughout the restaurant. It mm -hmm. would come to life, you know. Uh, it was Animator's Palace. Yeah. And it was, uh, and that's basically what happened. And they had uh, all these, like, little paint buckets and stuff on your on your table. table and then they would give you they would let you draw pictures and then at the end of your meal you would give them the picture that you drew uh the waiter would come around and collect them and the next thing you know the drawing that you drew comes to life in those little areas on the wall there yeah. it was so wild man it, it was a cool 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 it was totally experience. cool like, I'm like, I drew that, and it's dancing around and stuff. Like, it made, they made it come to life. It's, it's, that's the Disney magic yeah. that, um, you know, goes into that value. Yep. Yep. Very true. Yeah. So, yeah, Animator's Palette was just the coolest thing. Um, and the whole restaurant, when you walk in, is white. And then as the meal progresses, more color starts coming into it. So by the time you leave, the whole restaurant's flooded with color. It is a cool experience. Mm -hmm. And the food is good. I mean, I will say, I've never heard everybody, some people complain about the, the dining room food on Carnival. I've always liked the dining room food on Carnival. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I've never I, had a problem with I don't, it. You know, the food, the food, I've never been blown away, really. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm a, some kind of connoisseur by any stretch of the imagination, but I... I don't think I've ever been blown, blown away much in my life with food, but um, maybe I just hadn't had the right stuff. It's good food, but it, yeah. I mean, nothing at Disney blew me away. Um, nothing in Carnival blows me away. Nothing at NCL blows me away, you know? Now, it's good food. So, I mean, as far as the food But it's good does, food. Yeah. It does the job, and it, it you know, fills you up, and it, and, it, and it tastes pretty good, you know? Yeah. So, as far as the food goes in the dining rooms, I think they're about equal, but Basically, it's the atmosphere yeah, that makes things different. A lot more magic, you know, and that just makes for a better dining experience. Yeah. It's like, ooh, what time is dinner? I want to go to the dining room to see what's going to happen. Lifts the spirit, gets you, you know, excited, and, uh, you know, that's, that's what it's all about. Yep. Okay, so the next topic that we're going to talk about is the ship layout. Which cruise line is more friendly as far as finding things on the ship? Carnival. Agreed. Disney ships, easy. that's yeah. easy. And it might be because we were on one of the smaller Disney ships, but it's like everything was kind of pushed to one side, so you only had a walkway on one side of the ship. Where on Carnival, it seems like you've got walkways on both, and everything's in the middle. It was a strange. It was. It took us a maybe it was because it. we've been on so many. To be fair to Disney, maybe it was because we've just been on so many Carnival cruise lines that we realized that the layout is generally the same. Yeah. It's just the size of the ship that's right. going to vary. But uh, the layout's, you know, pretty much the same, and it feels like home to us because we've been so much. And I think we're just used to that. Mm -hmm. And but this layout was very different from that. Mm -hmm. So we found ourselves a little more confused on how and where to go. Um, we caught on, yep. but it took a minute. 
But I definitely think Carnival's layout is much better and much more user-friendly for sure. Yeah, and going into that, we're talking, we're talking about the elevators, okay? The elevators were tiny. I mean, you could probably yeah, fit you six people comfortably in an elevator Who and that's it. Who would have thunk, right? I mean, Disney should know better <laughs> than this. Um, you take your kids, although we didn't, but they're, you know, we, they, we couldn't get them out of school. Um, <clears throat> you bring your families and your kids and stuff, you would think you need big, gigantic elevators, strollers, you know, all these families of strollers galore on that ship. Mm -hmm. I've never seen so many strollers other than at Disney World. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, my gosh, the elevators were dinky. You could get six people in them. Yep. That's it. And if a family had a stroller, they would literally have to wait for an empty elevator to be able to get themselves and that stroller on the elevator. So, I think overall the ship It was definitely was... an elevator design... It was definitely an elevator designed for a mouse. <laughs> You're so silly. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. <laughs> okay, so I our... Just, I just, just thought of that all by myself. Ow! Mm. Right. <laughs> okay, our next topic is going to be, we're going to talk about kid-friendly and adult-friendly. So let's talk about kid-friendly first, all right? Mm -hmm. um, which cruise, okay, this is going to be kind of difficult because you're not comparing apples to apples, okay? Carnival has a fantastic kids program. We know this. Our kids have been sailing since they were, you know, nine years old. Mm -hmm. They've been to the little kids clubs, the teen clubs, everything. They've got a great Dr. Seuss program. Not mocking Carnival at all. But Disney's a step up on the kids program. Those kids clubs were freaking incredible. And we didn't have kids with us, so we could only go in like on a preview. But they had the they had a whole Marvel room that was interactive, the Toy Story Land room, Disney June. Very so, immersive, interactive. Yeah. You know, again with that Disney magic. You know, they had the what was the place yeah. we went to, and it had the guy from Frozen. The guy uh, yeah, it was you who. <laughs> yeah. What was it? The, What's his name? Wandering Oaken's Trading Post or something. Yeah. yeah. You know things like that. You know, you can look in and see it snowing, and then the character comes to the to window, the sauna to the sauna. And, uh huh. Starts talking to you and stuff yeah. like that. And then Andy's room. Oh, Andy's room is so cool. It looks like a giant bed. So you like look up and you, you feel like you're a little toy and it looks like this giant bed and there's a slide coming down off the bed. And it is, I mean, just immersive. It's like you're, like so you're a small cool. little toy. Everything is big. You feel like you're that little toy in this gigantic room. And, you know, that's the cool stuff that Disney does. That's hard to beat on any other cruise line. Carnival just can't compete with that, but I don't think they're trying to. No. This know? is this is the, like we were talking yeah. about the value. That's just of the, the cruise, difference, the you know. Disney difference and what you're getting going to get out of that. Yeah. So if you and that's just one of the kids clubs. There's a whole other one that we didn't even go in that's a very interactive lab, I think is what they call it, where you can do some sort of experiments or whatever. We didn't even go in that one because we didn't have our kids with us this time, but man, their kids clubs are Top notch. Yeah. I mean, Kids will have a ball um, there at Disney. Yeah. In those clubs. They are really, really, really cool. We talk to parents and they're like, I can't get my kid out of the kids club to come and hang out with me at the pool. So, you know. You know, so, you know, Disney's probably going to win out on that. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but. With that said, Carnival does a great job. Too. Right. So we're not knocking Carnival's no. program. We're no. just saying Disney goes above and beyond yeah. when it comes to those kids' programs. No doubt. No doubt about it. And also, that where Andy's room was, uh -huh. what, what was the name of that whole section called? Do you remember? It was Oceaneers Club. Oceaneers Club. No, yeah. we were only able to go in there on the first day whenever we got on the ship. Yeah. And we were just kind of walking around. Because if you don't have kids, you cannot go right. in there for the safety of the children. But we were able to go on the first day, so we didn't. But we didn't get a lot of footage of it, but we did get some. Yeah, and you'll see that later. But yeah, there's a little bit in the ship tour, and our, of course, our battery died while, right while we were in the middle of that, so we didn't get all of it. But so just FYI, neat place. very yeah. neat place. Okay, now adult friendliness. Which cruise line is most adult friendly, Carnival or Disney? Well, definitely Carnival. No doubt. I mean, that's kind of a no-brainer. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Disney does adults too, mm -hmm. but it's just a different, it's in a different way. Yeah. You know, it's a lot more tame. And uh, 
You know, which that's fine. That's cool. You know, parents should be tamed when they've got a whole bunch of kids with them on a cruise ship. You know, they they need to be tamed. And and uh, not saying that Carnival gets gets crazy or anything like that, but uh, I definitely like the adult friendly stuff with Carnival much more. Well, and that goes back to what we were talking about, about live entertainment. That's something me and Jason like to do is just go and sit and get a drink and listen to live music. And that's not, that wasn't an option for us. Yeah. So things like that, um, they did have plenty to do for the adults. I'm not saying that there was nothing for adults to do because it was just the two of us. We didn't do a lot of the kid events. Um, well, but it was different stuff. Like they would have adults only trivia and things like that, which we did enjoy, but it's not something we would have gravitated to if other options had been available. The one prop I'm gonna give Disney is there is a dedicated adult only pool and it's enforced. Mm -hmm. Carnival does not have that. Quiet Cove. And it was definitely quiet. Yeah. It was almost too quiet. Sometimes for me. it was too quiet. They didn't play music or anything yeah, right there. Yeah, you know, um, I, I, it was nice to get in the pool and the hot tub and it'd be kind of quiet, but mm -hmm. sometimes I'm, I'm big, I'm, I'm a big activity guy. I like to just see the activity, you know, and, and I felt like it was lacking, um, um, at least adult activity that is. I will say this too, and we might get into this in a minute, but I'm going to go ahead and say it now, um, that cleanliness, not that Carnival's dirty, you know, but... Uh, they they do a great job keeping their ships clean too. Uh, I have seen some dirt. We all do, um, but Disney man, whew, man, that's a clean ship. You guys, I would get, I'd go down to deck five and run. That was their one deck that went all the way around the ship, and I would run every morning, and I would see those guys dressed in their little jumpsuits working like little minions, man. Every day. And they worked their tail off, and that ship you could eat off the floor probably. It was so darn clean. But cleanliness, I got to give that to Disney because, yep. man, it is just sparkling clean, you know? Yeah, I mean, they were revarnishing wood on decks. Every window, every piece of glass got cleaned every single day. You didn't see water spots yeah. anywhere. You know, the, the rails and stuff, you have the glass at the bottom. I mean, it was the clearest glass we've ever seen, yeah. you know? Carnival, you always see the kind of water, water stains spots. and stuff, water spots. You saw a little bit of that. It's hard to avoid that, but, man, they were, like, as clear as you could get them, though. On Disney. Yep. So I'll let y'all know that too. Cause okay. I know one other thing Jason wants to point out. Oh, yeah. Is what you're allowed to bring on as far as alcohol goes. We were able to bring a six pack a piece. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. So we would just bring a 12 pack onto the ship. Of beer. Of beer. Okay. Uh, so we brought it on the ship when we boarded. And then at port, you can grab you a 12 pack. Or two six packs and bring them back onto the ship from yep. port each port each port so i was able to do that we did it in florida keys and in nassau well, I initially brought a 12 pack on brought a 12 pack on uh in nassau and florida keys mm -hmm. yep and we so never he, got off at castaway key nah, but we'll get into they that would, later. they wouldn't have that there yeah. anyway but um it so, helps oh, money yeah. you know it, it it saves uh saves money Yep. There's no sure. drink package, so you're yeah. paying individually for your drinks. Yeah. And so you have the choice. You can bring beer or you can bring wine per person. But we chose th this time. We're like, we've never been on a cruise ship that allows beer. We're going to forego the wine, and we're just going to bring beer on to see how it works. And, man, it was nice. And how cold was that little refrigerator? A little cooler kept some cold beer, y'all. Yes. But it was nice to be able to go back to the room and um, open my cooler and get a nice cold beer and sip on it and then go wander the ship yep. you know that was very very nice yeah i wish they'd do that on all the ships oh man yeah yeah because it saved us some money it sure did yeah that and was it was nice. just enough you know ports port days were just close enough to where i'd hit it right before i ran out you know yeah and we'd buy a few drinks on board but our yeah. bar bill was less than 200 dollars for cheap. a seven day cruise yeah. because we had that beer so that was that was nice mm -hmm. definitely nice definitely a plus okay for disney yep all right, so the last thing we're going to say is, is a Disney cruise worth it? Because that is the big question that everybody has been asking us. Is it worth the extra money? I'm going to say yes, at least once everyone should do a Disney cruise. 
Am I gonna say, oh my God, Disney was so amazing, I'm never gonna cruise any other cruise line and I'm sticking with Disney forever? No, because we like different experiences. But I think that, yes, it is worth the money to at least do it once. And I will say this too, if you have little bitty kids, like toddlers, five, six, seven year olds, I think I would prefer taking them on a Disney cruise as opposed to Disney World. Yeah, because you get more intimate interaction you with do. the characters. You do. You um, So they're going to have these amazing character meet and greets all through the cruise, which with the little ones, that means more to them than riding a ride. Yeah, they're going to feel more, a lot more connected to the characters on a cruise ship. Yeah, they will. You know, it's like, it's like, um, it's like walking around your living room and Mickey Mouse is there with you, you know? It's pretty weird. I'm telling you, it was pretty cool dancing with that Mickey in the, in, the, in the lobby. That was pretty neat. I saw know? Mickey more in my life on that cruise than I have in my entire life anywhere else. That is true. He yeah. was everywhere. Yeah. He was everywhere. And I mean, where else do you get to do a pirate party with, with the characters and Christmas parties with the characters? And they... I think that the little bitty kids would definitely benefit more from a Disney cruise than a trip to Disney. And also think about it, if you've got a three-year-old and they're tired mid-afternoon, you can walk, you know, 30 feet to the elevator, go to your cabin and take a nap. You're at Disney World. It's a, what, 10, 12 mile trek back to the, to the resort for that child to take a nap or they have to sleep in a, in a stroller. So for the little ones, I know if our kids were little and we were thinking about that, having had both experiences, because we've been to Disney World and we've been on the Disney Cruise, for the little kids, I think the cruise is definitely the way to go. Mm -hmm. I agree. Me personally, I like Carnival. <laughs> Overall. Overall, I like Carnival. Um, would <laughs> I do a Disney one again? Yeah, but it would be... Yeah, I would, but it would, you know, I wouldn't be super excited about it. Um, just, just being honest. I'm the Disney person. I would go See, for her. See, you get real honest opinions from us. Yeah. Because I'm the Disney person. Oh, I'm going to keep it real now. I, <laughs> I could do without me. a Disney cruise, you know. <laughs> um, I'm a, I'm a carnival guy. I'm, uh, I, I'm an NCL guy. I know this is NCL. I got nothing to do with this, but I'm just throwing that out there too. And we're going to see what else kind of guy I am whenever we get on Royal Caribbean one day. Yep. But I think I'm going to like that one pretty good. I think so, too. Yeah. So, anyway, hope this helps, um, you know, answer some of your guys' questions. I'm sure yeah. you've had some of the same thoughts we have. We hope that we can kind of help you and enlighten you based on our experience. And um, once again, we appreciate you guys watching and keeping up with us. Um, please uh, leave some comments or if you have any questions just let us know mm -hmm. um, hit the subscribe button and the little bell for notifications and uh, until next time happy cruising happy cruising bye